Good morning everyone, it's Al and uh, I wanted to do a quick video <clears throat> on uh, three single action revolvers uh, that I have and uh, a long uh, or a durability test on the Heritage uh, Arms Rough Rider 22 uh, which is this one here. This gun has now had over 20,000 rounds and um, it, it had had it never had any problems until it went up past probably 15,000 rounds and uh, since then I've had to uh, well he developed a, uh, a timing problem after probably 18,000 rounds or so where uh, the trigger or, or the hammer wouldn't uh, properly cock the uh, or wouldn't properly turn the cylinder I should say uh, it would skip some and uh, the cylinder became very very loose it, it when you put it on half cock you could hear it click and it wouldn't click anymore and I felt something at one point where it was binding inside and the hammer became a little hard so I pulled on it and it became uh, it, you know it became smooth but then that's when I started having the cylinder problem so I took it to a gunsmith <clears throat> and uh, he repaired it uh, and it was only like thirty dollars I don't know what part essentially you know, got messed up inside or something came out of alignment, but anyways, it was an easy fix. But then what I started having problems was uh, misfires. It would misfire consistently uh, two, three rounds out of every cylinder full. And so I did a little bit of research and uh, I found out that <clears throat> the uh, Colt single action revolvers, or revolvers in general, uh, after thousands of rounds of use, develop what is called uh, cylinder end shake which is a gap that develops between the rear of the barrel and the cylinder itself and it causes a headspace problem with resulting in timing issues just like I had as well as misfires and so <clears throat> there's an easy way to correct that which is to add bushings to the front of the cylinder where the pin goes through and so I when I did my research I found out that Brownells actually uh, sales uh, that product and there are these shims right here and the shims are made for Colt single action revolvers uh, and then you can see here well maybe you can see here Colt first second and third generation the all three screws you know models the all three screw Blackhawk single six so it fits a number of revolvers that are based on the Colt single action which this uh, uh, Heritage Arms is so each one of this uh, shims is four thousandths of an inch. It actually took two of these shims uh, to put right in between, right in front of the cylinder where the um, where the pin goes through. And the drawback to that is that when you take the cylinder out for cleaning, you gotta uh, keep track of those shims, and and they are kind of a pain to put them back in there. So I think the next time when I take it out, I'm going to strip it down with alcohol. And then I'm going to super glue the shims right to the front of the cylinder. And so if you were to look at one today, it would look kind of like this. Let me show you. So this is where the this is where the shim actually goes right here. Put two shims in there, put the pin through, and then that fixes it. <clears throat> By the way, so this other uh, revolver that I just disassembled in front of you, it's a... Uh, uh, it's a revolver I got out of Cabela's. It is made in Italy and it is a 10 shot revolver. It is heavy, very, very heavy. This, it's, it's a very large revolver. Uh, and it's heavy because the cylinder is quite large as it uh, shoots 10 rounds. It comes with a, uh, with a cylinder for 10 uh, long rifle uh, rounds and another cylinder for 10 magnum uh, uh, 22 magnum rounds so uh, this was $349 I believe uh, the one thing that you'll notice is that it, <clears throat> when you get it from factory it shoots very very low from point of aim and you may actually notice that I actually had to file the front side down significantly now all I have to do is uh, blue it and uh, it's uh, it's dead on right now. It's it's very very accurate. And then my third and final one is my Ruger single six, 
uh, which is the uh, the convertible one, which means that it, it comes with a 22 long rifle cylinder as well as the uh, 22 magnum cylinder. This thing is just absolutely gorgeous. It just works well. It feels right. It balances extremely well. The only thing I don't really care for is the sights themselves uh, on any of them. They, um, you know, th these are guns that are meant for ta target shooting, but. Uh, the one good thing about the Ruger is that it has a rated front sight, so I'm going to paint that with uh, probably fingernail polish, don't know what color yet, I'm debating that. And then I'm going to paint the outline of the rear sight. Uh, on the Heritage Arms, uh, it's the, the sight picture is actually very small. You, what you see on the front side is it's just tiny. Uh, when it's in low light conditions, it's very, very tough to see. But this thing, uh, they come regulated so extremely well from factory, your point of aim is just dead on. Uh, what I did to kind of relieve a little bit of that, I went ahead and milled down the, the front side, or the rear side a little bit, the rear side channel. I milled it down probably of about five thousandths of an inch so I could see more of the front side. And that helped out tremendously. So anyways, that is the long term... Uh, Review of the Rough Rider. You can see it's uh, it's been worn pretty well through the years. It's you know paint because it's not really bluing. It's it's uh, this thing is like a uh, aluminum uh, receiver uh, or frame in these parts here. Uh, the the pin it's pretty worn down. Uh, I've had to actually remove the cylinder. I have a video of that or not the cylinder but the barrel. I came loose on one time, I had to remove it and clean the threads and then put blue Loctite, put it back in. Um, but I tell you what, for $150 it's what I paid for this brand new, uh, you just can't beat it. This is probably my favorite of all three as far as trigger feel, trigger action, point of aim and overall balance. This balance is better than any of the other three. This probably balances the worst because it's so, it's so heavy. Uh, but it shoots, ex it shoots extremely well. This guy here doesn't balance as good as this one because it's front heavy. Uh, but the good thing about that is because it has a very thick barrel. Now, uh, this will probably outlast any, uh, or at least will outlast this one. I don't know about this one here because this is made out of very tough steel. This is, uh, this is real quality. You can tell when you look at it. <clears throat> this thing has extremely good, good bluing. Uh, it's all steel. This thing just—it's just like a brick. It's very heavy. It's just quality throughout. They did an outstanding job with this thing. Uh, and like I said, you can get our Cabela's, and you know when you can carry ten shots in there, that's almost like a—you know—having a, you know, a semi-automatic pistol uh, uh, on you. So I'll go ahead and uh, do some shooting and let you kind of take a look at it, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks. So we're going to go ahead and shoot the uh, Rough Rider after uh, it's been fixed. We put it on half cock and then we load it up. And there he goes, we got it, we got it loaded up. We're gonna go ahead and shoot that gong out there and see if we can hit it. So that's it. Works perfectly now. Uh, since I put the uh, the cylinder bushings in there, and so this gun now has a new lease on life for $150. I've had it, I don't know, four or five years, I guess maybe. Uh, and I've done uh, more shooting with this than with any other handgun. It just shoots amazingly accurately. It shoots well. This is, uh, I guess, about 35 yards to the gun. Uh, you know, it's point of aim. 
you can go wrong with one one of these <clears throat> so for a long really long durability testing a lot of people talk a lot of smack about it's made out of pot metal this and that and the other thing uh, there's no such thing as pot metal when it comes to firearms this is uh, aluminum aluminum alloy and if anybody cares to actually do some research aluminum has more tensile strength uh, than some steels do and that's why it's used uh, heavily in aircraft and submarines and those kind of things um, because it is lightweight but yet has a lot of strength to it now it's not as strong as a uh, high carbon steel uh, that you'd find in good firearms. It's definitely not as strong as a, as a Ruger or, or that one from Cabela's that, that I showed you earlier. But, you know, for the price that you pay, this thing will last you years and years and years. Um, and so it's, I think it's a good quality firearm. I don't know that, as, you know, that many people that have shot over 20,000 rounds on a handgun. So uh, it's not something that I want to do with my Ruger. That's for sure. I want to, you know, shoot my Ruger but sparingly. I shoot this one all the time because if if it fails, I'm not out of pocket a whole lot of money. It's a $150 gun versus a $500 gun. So, anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everybody. God bless and take care.